Welcome to A to Z Sports Prime Time on this Wednesday night. Hope everybody's having a great evening so far. Had a great conversation with former Titans wide receiver Nate Washington today on the state of the wide receiver room. And that's exactly what we're going to dive into here tonight. Talk about Traylon Burks in year three as the Titans continue to work their way through the second wave of free agency and wrap things up with a little rising and falling on our last primetime show for about a week. I'm going out of town, taking some vacation. So appreciate you guys hanging out here with us. Always appreciate when you share the broadcast around on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and on Twitch. That is the best way for you to participate in the program. If you're hanging out on Twitter, please retweet the show in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. If you're on Facebook Live, you can share. You can share now to public. That's in the bottom left. And if you're on YouTube or Twitch, please like the video and subscribe to the channel while you're there. Higher standards is what we are getting ready to hold the Tennessee Titans to on offense. And there's a lot of different ways that you can go about that. Not just for guys who have underperformed, not just for Will Levis in year two, not just for Brian Callahan, who's expectation is to come in here and make this a better football team. But I'll explain to you why DeAndre Hopkins uh, should have higher expectations or why you should have higher expectations for DeAndre Hopkins. Well, I'll let Nate Washington do it right after we start the show. Welcome into A to Z Sports Primetime from the Zen Sports Studios. I'm your host, Buck Rising. I'm proud, as always, to be presented to you by the great people at Zen Sports Download the app, plug in the promo code ATOZTN, and get up to $1,000 on your no danger first wager. Zensports.com for more information. Two Rivers Ford, quality American made Ford vehicles from the South's most trusted Ford dealership. Two Rivers Ford in Mount Juliet or online at tworiversford.com. And TrueMav Fitness, the best way to work out, a new way to work out for the best version of you. Go to TrueMavFitness.com for your first workout free as a Middle Tennessee resident. So it's not hard for us to look at the Titans on offense and say, yeah, you can do better in 2024 points per game, 17 and a half anemic scoring uh, for obvious reasons in the red zone took a dive because for all of your issues with Todd Downing, turns out he was a pretty important part of your red zone offense. And the offensive line, of course, was an issue. We know about Tannehill struggles. There's a million different reasons why the Titans struggled on offense last year. But DeAndre Hopkins was, I mean, I won't say the lone bright spot because I think Tajay Spears had moments and Will Levis gave you enough to give you hope about what he might be in the future, though I'm anything but sold on Will Levis just yet. I think he's got a lot more to prove. DeAndre Hopkins was the biggest bright spot on an offense that was absolutely putrid and was able to play in all 17 games, eclipse a 1,000 yards, and produce at a high enough level to make you think, okay, this guy has clearly still got it. Maybe not the best version of DeAndre Hopkins anymore, but still a very, very competent player. Seven touchdowns, uh, 75 receptions, 1,057 yards for DeAndre Hopkins on one of the worst offenses that we've ever seen. Now, as you look at what might be expected from him in year two, for the Tennessee Titans, I think it's fair to hold him to a higher standard. And I think that he would be comfortable with you holding him to a higher standard as well. Certainly, former Titans wide receiver Nate Washington expects better out of Hopkins in year two for reasons that you will hear from here in just a second. The question is, your Two Rivers Ford take, who benefits the most from the Calvin Ridley signing? You can submit your nominations in the chat on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. While I remind you that your Two Rivers Ford take is made possible by Two Rivers Ford, quality American-made Ford vehicles, and award-winning customer service. Two Rivers Ford in Mount Juliet or online at tworiversford.com for more information. It's truck month, by the way. Get out to Two Rivers Ford. Make sure that you get one of their awesome F-150s, uh, Super Duties, all kinds of cool trucks out there during truck month, but only about a week left, week and a half left, 10 days left. How many days are in March? 31? Either way. Uh, 30, I believe, as a matter of fact. 10 days left in truck month. Make sure you get your ass out to Two Rivers Ford in Mount Juliet or online at tworiversford.com. Okay, so who benefits the most from Calvin Ridley's presence? You can make an argument for Will Levis, certainly having a better caliber wide receiver as a wide receiver two or a wide receiver one A or a wide receiver one B, however you view him. For the price tag, he probably needs to look in some form or fashion like wide receiver one 
in this offense, given where Hop is at this point in his career and how disappointing Traylon Burks and uh, Cal Phillips, nobody had the expectation for him to be wide receiver one, but still, this is probably, this needs to be the best wide receiver on your foot, wide receiver on your football team, easy for me to say, in 2024. Now, Levis obviously benefits. Brian Callahan, as a play caller, obviously benefits from having a player like this who's versatile enough to be deployed across the formation and who brings a little more firepower to an offense that significantly lacks it. You can make an argument for DeAndre Hopkins, which is the argument that Nate Washington made earlier on the radio show today. We will now get what I expected, not only from Hop, but from the other side of Hop with a number one receiver. I spoke about last offseason about, you know, hopefully trailing, turning the corner, which is the other part that I'll address in this question. Hopefully trailing, turning the corner, and becoming a true number one receiver on the other end of Hop because I knew Hop would be reliable. I knew football was important for him. I knew he would be there when his number was called. You know, I knew he would make a lot of, you know, spot big plays for this team that would help them out. But I just knew he was at that point in his career where he wasn't really at that number one receiver stage. I knew that he needed somebody to step into a number one spot for him. So not only does it allow him to now be comfortable in his role and not be pressed to make big plays or or be the first down receiver or the number one guy on the team, but he'll be – I'm expecting Hop to be even better this year. Because now it takes a lot of pressure off of him at this stage in his career. What Calvin is able to do from immediate routes to deeper routes to, you know, even screen game, you know, I think it would be exactly what I was hoping that Hop could have the opportunity to play alongside of on his, unfortunately, on his way out because just real, our father time is undefeated. But on his way out of the league, you know, his last few years in the league, he will have an actual real chance to have some real impact. You know, I'm looking for another 1,000-yard season. I'm looking for some big things, you know. Um, and as I stated with Calvin's ability, I think it will obviously open up a lot of things for Calvin, um, having a hop on the other side of him. Hop's dependability, his reliability, him being able to get open in zone, him being able to be a tough nose, uh, a football player, will definitely give Calvin something that he hasn't had uh, in a couple of years as well. I think he hasn't had a, a, a hop since Julio, in my opinion. Christian Kirk is a great receiver, but he's just not the same type of guy. Um, so that's Nate Washington. On the radio show today, you can go check out that full interview on The Zone's YouTube channel. You can also check it out via the podcast of the radio show. It is called The Buck Rising Show, as a matter of fact. Not self-involved at all. But it speaks to the versatility that Calvin Ridley will provide, not just for himself, but with DeAndre Hopkins as a running mate. And we heard from Ridley about this, the type of player that he is at his introductory press conference. You're going to hear from Calvin Ridley here in just a second. Right after I remind you that the primetime program is made possible by True Math Fitness in the Gulch. Go to TrueMathFitness.com for your first workout free as a Middle Tennessee resident. No workout is ever recycled or repeated at True Math. They are there to put you in position to succeed. TrueMathFitness.com for more information, whether you want group fitness classes, personal training, or an awesome open gym to work out as you please. True Math Fitness is the spot for you. This is Calvin Ridley talking about who he is as a player and what type of uh, what type of ability he brings to his offense. Exciting, um, and um, I'm a player. It doesn't matter who the other teams have. I don't. I don't. I don't really care who they have. I mean, I, obviously, we will look into it, but um, I'm a believer in who I'm working with. So you know, we out there running those sprints and we sweating in the off season and we working together and we, you know, we, we, we you know, we're becoming brothers at the end of the day. I believe in everyone on my team. That's when I came from Alabama. Like I, when I look around, I don't care who the other team has. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna work to be good, and we're gonna we're gonna kick their ass. And then, um, <laughs> I mean, that, yeah, I mean, I don't really care who they. I mean, I believe in my teammates and the work that we're gonna put in. But like you said, the the you know this this division is getting really good for real. They got some good players on these other teams. So, but we got good players too. We're gonna we're gonna come. We're gonna come with it. And. Uh, you know, I know they've you know they've been in a great organization around here, and I'm excited, man. I'm ready, decided to do what I got to do. So that's Calvin Ridley talking about uh, what he brings 
to his team, what kind of energy he brings to his team. Less about the deployment, but he spoke about that on the radio show with me, and you can check that interview out from last Friday. Uh, so now, Traylon Burks, how does he factor into all of this? You'll hear from Nate Washington on that as well here in just a second. This is going to be year three for Traylon Burks, and of course, under 250 yards receiving, he had 200, what did Traylon have? 222, 225 last year. Either way, it was anemic. He missed a bunch of games. He uh, disappointed when he was out on the field. I think he's in his, his own head a little bit. And I think the Titans fans are probably pretty much done with him. I know that I don't consider him a factor in any way, shape, or form. I don't, I don't have any expectation for him. Uh, really? Well, we can talk about the level of expectation that we have for Traylon Burks heading into year three. Right after I remind you that the primetime program is made possible by Zen Sports. Download the app, plug in the promo code ATOZTN, get up to $1,000 on your no danger first wager. Terms and conditions do apply. They also have same game parlays for you to wager on. All you need to do is plug in that promo code that you see right here, ATOZTN, in the Zen Sports app. Must be 21 and up and in the state of Tennessee to bet. Uh, gambling problem called the Tennessee red line, 1-800-889-9789. So what are your expectations for Traylon Burks in year three? It's crazy that it's already year three for Traylon Burks, even crazier that it's already year four for Calvin, uh, excuse me, for Caleb Murphy, uh, Caleb Farley, rather wrong, Caleb, Caleb Farley and Dylan Radins, guys like that, guys who have definitely underperformed and you're not, you have no expectations for them whatsoever. Traylon Burks is teetering on that. And personally, I'm already there. I I think that they should continue to add wide receiver talent that they think fits their system. I think that the sooner you can get Traylon Burks out of the lineup, the better that you'll be. I think that anything that you get out of Traylon Burks this year is a plus, but I have zero expectation of him. And, you know, pending how this year goes, I can't imagine a scenario in which they would pick up his fifth year option given what that would cost and, and how little he has actually contributed to this football team. But we talked about it with Nate Washington earlier today on the radio show, and Nate was uh, certainly keen to give his thoughts too. Saying that all of that tied together and turning this corner into the next part of this question, I'm hoping that this is the year for Traylon Burks. I'm hoping that he benefits the most out of Calvin and Hop. I'm hoping that he plays relaxed. I'm hoping that he finds a way to stay on the field. He has to be healthy. If he's not healthy, nothing else matters. But I truly feel like this is his breakout season. I'm hoping for at least six to 800 yards from the kid. I hope that he shows us football matters. I truly feel like the microscope is on, on, on him tremendously, in my opinion, more than the other two um, because of – the trade value in which we gave up to get him. Um, I think this is his best situation. Also, dealing under two veterans that have been through a tremendous career, both on and off the field. You know, even learning from Calvin's situation of what he dealt with a couple years ago with his suspension. I think this will be a huge learning situation for Traylon, and I'm hoping he benefits at the end of it. So, you know, we talk about Calvin, we talk about Hop and his ability, but, you know, tying trailing into this opportunity and seeing this thing unfold with a passionate Will Levis is going to be amazing for me. It's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to next year, and I, and I think it will benefit all three guys. There's certainly a world in which that exists, and I don't want to discount it, but, you know, I would probably argue for Traylon Burks, you know, I, I know there's been some some Twitter rumblings out there, not anything from anybody credible about Traylon Burks being moved or anything like that, but I know some of you guys brought it up last night with me, and I, I told you that I hadn't heard anything to that effect, but if they can try and move Traylon Burks off this roster, I would prefer them do that, absolutely. Now, maybe they see something in Traylon Burks that I'm not capable of seeing because all I've seen from Traylon Burks is one good training camp last year. And and that's about the extent of the Traylon Burks experience. He's come up big in games. He's had two big games against the Bengals. He was a big part of the reason they won in green Bay on Thursday night football a couple of years ago. And he was critical in helping them beat the chargers in week three in overtime, but it's so few and far between. He's not a reliable player. I would advocate for trying to move him. I don't know that a team would give up any kind of draft capital. If Jerry Judy went for a fifth and a sixth round pick, 
I mean, could you get a seventh for Traylon Burks? Perhaps just on, on, you know, Isaiah Wilson got traded for a seventh. I suppose you could get a seventh for Traylon Burks, both former first round picks that have underwhelmed for very, very different reasons. But honestly, you know, I think he would just benefit from a fresh start elsewhere. Now, this is a fresh start, right? It's a different coaching staff. It's a different general manager. It's going to be a very different team that he's going to be a part of. So maybe he doesn't need to be moved to have a fresh start. But as long as he's here, he's always going to be tied to A.J. Brown. There's nothing he can do to escape that. It's not his fault. It's just that's the product of how it happened. And I'm not saying that his health is his fault either. I, I truly, I just feel bad for Traylon Burks. I would try and get him out of here before the regular season started or, you know, at, at worst before the trade deadline. Perhaps he shows you something that makes him more of a viable trade uh, target for NFL teams or in need of wide receiver help. But right now, there's nothing about the Traylon Burks experience that I think warrants keeping him around um, beyond that they need bodies at that position. And they invested a first-round pick in him a couple of years ago. I'm sure they would like to see some level of dividends on that. But to date, those do not exist. All right, rising and falling, and we'll wrap things up on this Wednesday night. Thank you guys, as always, for hanging out with us. Whose stock rose? Whose stock fell this week in sports? Real simple game. Uh, whose stock rose? Uh, we've got some good ones, but I'll get to whose stock fell as well here in just a second, right after I remind you that the primetime program is presented by the Ashton Real Estate Group of REMAX Advantage, the official real estate agent of the red-hot Nashville Predators. They are riding a 15-game point streak with a big win. I know it's a terrible team in the Sharks, but 8-2 to two last night, and that's after uh, struggling basically for the first half of the game. Preds red-hot. Ashton team, red hot with that Intel edge you need to succeed. Don't sell without the Intel that you can get at GaryAshton.com. Uh, whose stock rose? Well, we've played this Mike Keep Keith clip for you before, but it really, uh, it really makes me laugh every time I see it. I would say that throughout the course, it's been a week since Calvin Ridley gave his introductory press conference, more than a week, less than a week, I'm sorry, he talked on Friday. Um since he gave his introductory press conference, this clip we did not play for you. And I thought that Calvin Ridley in his transparency and in his just general attitude really did himself a lot of good. And, you know, PR is one thing, pr production is another, and he'll still have to perform on the football field. But Calvin Ridley uh, explaining what he did to earn his contract, I thought was the biggest stock up moment from the last week. Good player. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the type of player, you know, who, who, who deserves this contract, I'm going to say that. I'm the type of player who, you know, you want in the building, who, who, you, someone who's going to work for, the, for, your, for your organization, someone who all their life as a kid, you know, you know, I rode city buses to high school just to go to school, two of them in the morning. And then I would ride two of them after school just to go back to my mom's house. And then I would get on another two buses to go to another high school to watch them, just to watch them. Because I'm already, this is where I'm going to play at next season. This, I'm done with it. I'm, I'm, this is where I'm going to play at. Then I'm riding two more buses, city buses, back home. At, I get home about 11 o'clock, and I got to get on another two city buses in the morning. Just, and I'm only doing this for football reasons. So that's what type of player. Like I, I, Y'all got a, a player who's going to come and work for that, for whatever y'all gave me. And, and y'all got a player. So stock up on Calvin Ridley, stock down on uh, Conor McGregor, who this week is making the rounds for the movie Roadhouse that he's promoting. Um, one of his interviews he did with ESPN, he also confirmed that him and Mike Chandler are going to fight this summer. Right now, they have a tentative date of June 29th, which I'm looking forward to seeing. That would be just a little less than a month ahead of Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul, which is on my birthday. And we've Lucas and I decided that we're going to have a watch party for that. So we'll keep you updated with the latest on that, because that should be a shit show. But Conor McGregor talking about all the damage that he did to the stuntmen on the uh, movie Roadhouse set, where he's talking about flying kicks to the head and kicking them in the ribs and somebody who's a professional fighter beating up on uh, people who are very much not. They are professional takers of hits, but still, um, I find Conor McGregor to be thoroughly a villain. I hope Mike Chandler beats the living piss out of him whenever they get a chance to fight. And uh, if I had audio of that, I would play it for you because him with his uh, reckless speculation, steroid-fused face 
is something to see at this point. Uh, he looks totally different than when he used to be a scrappy, plucky underdog. Good story. He's still an interesting story. He's not a good story because he's a shitty human. But Conor McGregor, shitty humans make for good fight discourse, absolutely. And whenever UFC 303 is on the 29th, so we'll see if they actually get that fight off the ground in time for then. But uh, yeah, Conor McGregor, kind of a piece of trash. Anyway, it's going to do it for us on this week of primetime shows because I'm off tomorrow. I'm on my way to Los Angeles uh, when or by tomorrow. I will be on my way to Los Angeles and looking forward to taking some time off. We will be back. The next show back will be a week from today. We will be back on Wednesday night. Uh, I will be back on the radio show on Wednesday as well. We'll do one more radio, one more hour of radio tomorrow because we're only on for an hour because we're carrying March Madness tournament game. So that'll be a great time. So you can hang out with Lucas and Bert and myself and Coach Casey Alexander of Belmont Men's Basketball because he's our tournament analyst for an hour tomorrow from 10 to 11. Uh, and then I won't talk to you guys until Wednesday on radio or on primetime. And I hope you have a great time away, or at least, uh, you know, that by the time I get back, you miss me a little bit. Because I know we spend a lot of time together. And it's okay. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. And I need a little bit of absence from you all, even though I love you. See you next Wednesday on the primetime show. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.